And hello YouTube, this is Thomas Judge back once again with another video in my series of instalments about how to make custom comics. In particular, this is about how to make custom dust jackets. So today, what we're going to be talking about is how to actually get the text and write the text that will form the prose and the blurb on your dust jackets, on the back of it, and also on the inside flaps. So to show you what I mean, here are some pictures of a... Um, of an existing dust jacket. So we talked about this briefly in the last video, which was the Superior Spider-Man hardcover. You can see the cover there. And if you turn it over, you can see the back of it there. Now what we're talking about today, if I zoom in, is specifically this bit here, which is the blurb on the back. And the blurb on the back normally um, has like a bit of a leading heading, normally in a slightly different color or a slightly larger font, as you can see here. And then it has a bit of a blurb summarizing what happens in the comic um, without any spoilers, just sort of teasing and uh, trying to appeal to people. He might pick it up in a library or pick it up in a bookshop to actually dive into a bit more. And then what it normally has a little bit lower down in the smaller font is just the list of issues included as well. Um, now, if we go into the inside flap, you'll see here, this is a pretty standard inside flap. They normally have a image at the bottom and then further up it has again a bit of text with a kind of a larger heading and then a bit of a blurb there. This blurb, if we zoom in now, is always a bit different to the one in the back, but it's thematically similar in that it's not a summary of what happens in the comic. It's not that at all. What it actually is, is more of a teaser or something to entice you into looking into the comic a little bit more. So you'll find quite a bit of hyperbole here of, you know, will Spider-Man survive? question marks, exclamation marks, that sort of thing. If we move to the back of the inside um, of the dust jacket here, you'll see the rear, what they call the French flaps, this is the rear flap of the dust jacket. Most comics, not all, but most of them will have this as where the creator's details are, so that would be the artists and the writers. Some comics will continue from the front French flap to the rear French flap with a blurb and so on, but that's quite infrequent, although I will show you an example of that in a later video. So here, if we zoom in, you'll see that what they tend to do is talk about each creator and each person involved in their own little blurb. The format you can see here is actually pretty much the standard format. It'll have a block of text saying what that person's famous for, what they've done, key work, maybe even where they live and what they're working on now. And it tends to have the creator's name in bold. So what we're gonna talk about today is exactly how you can come up with those blurbs of text yourself. I know not everyone is very good at putting these things together and obviously it does require a bit of research as well. So what I'm gonna talk you through is where I get those um, blocks of text from and how I manipulate them and put something together so I actually know what I can write in the blurbs of my dust jackets as I make them. So on that note, I think the, uh, the first thing to point out is that what we're gonna be talking about here and what we're gonna be talking about in this case um, isn't going to be Superior Spider-Man, it's going to be this character. And this character is Gwenpool. The reason I picked this is because um, there is no Gwenpool hardcover or omnibus or oversized hardcover as yet, but I'm planning on making one because I really, really like the character. So I'll show you where I'm looking to get the blurbs for my Gwenpool dust jacket. Um, but before that, I'll give you a bit of background on the character. So um, Gwenpool came around in June 2015, and the reason that that date's important is that's the year after Spider-Gwen, as a totally separate character, debuted in the Spider-Verse. Um, in February 2015, Spider-Gwen started her own series and was incredibly popular. So as a result, in June 2015, all Marvel titles being published had alternate covers with Gwen Stacy being reimagined or sort of mashups of other characters. Um, and like lots of different comics had those. Now, one of those was this comic which is the variant cover for Deadpool's Secret Secret Wars number two. Um, I'm gonna talk more about Secret Wars from 2015 in a separate video. Um, I'm actually planning a series about that separately. But this cover here is the first time that Gwen Paul as a character, which is kind of a mashup of Gwen Stacy, Spider Gwen, and Deadpool was depicted. It wasn't meant to go anywhere, it wasn't really much more than an afterthought. However, it then became clear quite soon afterwards that many fans were cosplaying as her at loads of comic conventions. And a Marvel editor called Jordan White noticed this. And as a result of this, um, Jordan White approached a writer called Christopher Hastings and an editor called Heather Antos with the task of creating a story around this Gwenpool character that was meant to be really popular. 
Now that plan was initially just to do a one shot, which was going to be called the Gwenpool Special, and that was going to come out at the end of 2015. But then they decided to actually introduce the character slightly prior to the one shot with a couple of backup stories in the ongoing Howard the Duck series. Um, I'm not a fan of Howard the Duck. I haven't, I haven't actually read any of those comics. But apparently from November 2015 to January 2016, those backup stories were drawn and released in those issues. Um, and the holiday special was then published in December and had art by the Japanese artist duo Guri Hiru. So that ended up being a success. So Marvel decided to make a Gwenpool ongoing series, which started in April of that year, 2016. And Chris Hastings asked for Guri Hiru's return for the artwork team. That was then a solo series called The Unbelievable Gwenpool. And that was 25 issues long. Um, and there's subsequently been a follow-up series called Gwenpool Strikes Back. Now, I know Gwenpool gets a lot of hate and also a lot of scepticism. People tend to think that she's a bit of a mashup between Harley Quinn and Deadpool. And therefore, sort of zany, goofy, stupid fun. Um, and I know that because I was one of those people. I really wrote her off. And the only reason that I read some of her comics is the same reason that I often read a lot of comics. Just to make up my own mind. But I did go into it with the suspicion that I was going to hate it and it was going to be goofy, zany fun. What I will say is this, Gwenpool is really, really good. Um, it's very funny, it's got a strong humour element, but if you can imagine really the best of Deadpool, so for example when Deadpool was written by Gail Simone, um, or if you can imagine something like the Next Wave series by Warren Ellis, it's that, got that same kind of self-referential, very intelligent funny dark humor to it i was totally surprised by how good the series was i would strongly recommend you check it out yourself you may not like it but it's always worth giving these things a try so um i'm planning on doing a custom bind of all of these and as a result what i need is to work out what i'm going to write on the blurbs on the back and the inside french flaps and to do that i'm going to start off where you should always start off with these things which is here so this is Gwenpool on Wikipedia. If you go into the Wikipedia entry, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff there. The best place to start is if you click on fictional character biography, you get a bit of backstory, and then you get some stuff about the solo series. Now, this varies on Wikipedia. Sometimes you get really useful blurbs that, to be honest, they just copied and pasted from other places themselves, probably, but they're written and done in the exact sort of style that you might need um, in order to write your own dust jacket. Unfortunately, this case, the Gwenpool entry on Wikipedia, isn't like that. It's what I would consider to be a summative entry, in that it summarises what happens in the solo series. It goes on for qu quite a while, but if you do have a read through it yourself, what you'll find out is that this is very much just a summary of every single issue without any kind of intrigue or teaser element or uh, sort of discursive narrative around it. And as a result, whilst it's useful if you want to look at it and find out what's going on in each particular issue or story arc, it's not going to be great for actually putting together the sort of teaser or blurb on the back that most dust jackets have. As you can see, this is really comprehensive. This is far more comprehensive than you would ever actually need. Um, and unfortunately, in this case, although we do have some useful information here, we don't actually have anything that I could use as a blurb. So, if Wikipedia lets me down, what I then do is I move on to this. Now this is Amazon. If you go into Amazon and you Google Gwenpool and you look at the first volume of her series, uh, you will see the trade paperback collection there. And if you scroll down here, you will see the blurb which they use to describe it. Now this sometimes, but not always, is the same blurb on the back of the actual trade collection itself. Um, and as you can see, it's done very much in that sort of more informal Marvel House style um, about sort of stories and daring do and question marks and, and what's going to happen next, that sort of thing. Um, similarly, if we look at the second volume um, and then we scroll down there, what we'll find as well is that the second volume similarly has that sort of text and that sort of um, intrigue related verb. So here, for example, what's the best part of living in a world of comic book heroes? Question mark. Um, also stuff like, you know, it ends, ellipsis, badly, exclamation mark. I mean, this is not the sort of text or prose that you would find in something like Wikipedia, but it is actually more in keeping with the sort of things that you might get on the blurb of a dust jacket. So looking at volume three there, again, you get the idea. There it is, scroll down, you've got a bit of a blurb, etc. I'm not going to go through all the volumes here, but you get the picture. You see what I mean. 
That's useful if trade collections of the comics that you want to bind exist. Amazon will have that. But if, for example, you're looking for uh, blurbs for a series which was never released as a trade collection, and you're trying to work out what you want to write to, to describe it on the back of a, of a dust jacket, or if you put together a comprehensive and, and eclectic binding order of your own that might miss out certain issues or not include certain story arcs, then what you need to do is dive a little bit deeper. And to do that, I would strongly recommend that you go here. So this is Comixology, and what Comixology has is all the issues for any particular series, both in terms of their collected editions and in terms of their single issue. So I'm going to go here to series. It brings up Gwenpool Strikes Back. Unbelievable. Right, so we're here. Unbelievable Gwenpool. So here we are. So what we have is an overall blurb for the whole series as a whole. That could be useful as a dust jacket for an omnibus. Then we have our blurbs, as we've seen before, on our um, collections. So if we click on, for example, the one for collection three, which is called Totally in Continuity, we've got a bit of a blurb here. So maybe I could use that. If I don't want to use that, let's say that I've decided to custom bind the first five issues and the last five issues, say. What I can do then is scroll down to the individual issues. And let's say I just want to get a blurb for the last few issues um, let's look at issue 21 here randomly picked at random and what you'll find is that Comixology will have a little blurb for that specific issue so here we are sometimes they're unique sometimes they copy and paste the same blurb for a couple of different issues but it definitely gives you a much more granular fine-tuned idea as to what text you can have depending on what issues you've collected um, I hope that's clear. It is a bit of work, to be honest. There's a lot of just copying and pasting into Word and getting all the main text down and the style of the main text and then just trimming it down yourself. But that is what I would recommend that you do. So I hope that's clear, guys. Start off with Wikipedia, then move to Amazon, and then dive into Comixology. So that takes us to the flaps on the actual um, front and the rear. Uh, sorry, the front flap and then the actual rear of the dust jacket. But in terms of the rear French flap, we're looking at things like, for example, um, the creators and the artists. So in terms of that, let's see what our options are. Um, if I go back another one. So sometimes in Comixology, it will actually have details for the individual artists and writers here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click into issue one and see if it's got any information here. So it says there, written by Christopher Hastings. Here I am on issue one. I go to Christopher Hastings there. It opens up on a page. Does this give me any information on Christopher Hastings? Uh, it doesn't give me a picture and it doesn't give me a blurb, unfortunately. Now, sometimes when you pick on a particular artist or a writer, you will get a little window with a picture and with a blurb. And that can be quite useful as your own springboard for working out where you're going to go with something like um, the artist and creator's blurbs on the rear French flap. Unfortunately here, Comixology is kind of letting me down, but not to worry. The next place that we would then go is back to Wikipedia. So this is where we left it a moment ago. If we go to Wikipedia and we have a look here, so we we're looking at getting some information on Chris Hastings, right? Um, so let's see, Christopher Hastings is here on the right. Let's click. Right, it hasn't got a picture of him. That's fine. I'm not a fan of getting a picture of him. Um, I tend not to have pictures of my creators because I think it looks a bit weird. Um, but here we have it. Christopher Hastings, born this date, which is fine. Uh, we have his... Oh, we can dive into some of his other um, series if you want. But we have his early life. We've got a bit of background there. We've got some stuff for his career. So you can copy and paste this and trim out or add in whatever it is that you want for your rear flap. So um, again, in terms of getting information on creators like writers and artists, start off with Comixology. If Comixology lets you down, go back to Wikipedia and that will normally cover you uh, for whatever you might need. And again, here is a picture here of what that rear French flap with the creator's details might look like. So um, that's all I wanted to say, guys. Just a quick short video. Some people have been asking me about where they get the text for the blurbs. Um, one person commented that after I spent a while um, making fun of the ridiculous text on the rear of the original Earth X and Paradise X graphic novels, 
um, what I would recommend or what I would do better. So this is what I would do. I would go through those things in that order. So to recap, we have Wikipedia, then Amazon, and then Com Comixology, diving down from the broad to the medium to the very fine-tuned details. And then in terms of creators and writers, um, start off with Comixology, then go to Wikipedia. And then just copy and paste the little blurbs you want, and then trim them down to size. I hope that helps, guys. Um, just a brief video on that. Um, how are you getting on with the custom dust jackets? Are there any questions or anything else that I've missed? Um, I apologise for the small gap between videos. Uh, life's been getting in the way and uh, having a very few sort of personal things going on. Um, hopefully going to have videos dropping a bit more often, but really keen to hear ideas from you guys as to what particular things you would like me to cover, especially when it comes to designing dust jackets or custom binds or custom comics. Otherwise, I've got a few ideas for... Um, sort of closed comic universes and reading orders and guides and things like that. As always, please like, comment, subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching. Um, please support the channel by heading over to Amazon.com and picking up the first novel of my um, prose series about superheroes called No Gods or Kings. Um, the first instalment is free if you're on Kindle Unlimited and is only 99 pounds or 99 cents. If you're not, I would really appreciate that. That would be great. Um, otherwise, until next time, guys, stay classy.